is this the best camera for you to learn photography on? This is the Canon 5D Mark II and although it's over a decade old, it's still a really useful camera, especially for photography. It's still gonna take great photos and videos. This camera changed the world of photography. When this camera came out in 2008, all of a sudden, people were using the same machine for professional photography and video. And although it's an absolutely professional camera, it made professional video accessible to everyone. So it really is the main camera for YouTube over the last decade. I'm suggesting the best thing for you to do if you want to learn photography is to pick one of these up second hand. But if that's not for you, then stick around to the end of the video because I'm going to tell you where you can learn photography and start learning photography for absolutely nothing. The question is, is really should you buy this, which is a decade old professional quality camera, or should you look to spend about the same amount of money on something that's brand new but is really for consumers? The main reason to buy this over a consumer camera is the full frame sensor that you get in it. Full frame photography has loads of advantages over a smaller sensored camera which all consumer cameras will be. Because it's that sensor size you're going to get this creative depth of field that you'll be able to make that background blur and you'll be so impressed by the portraits you can get out of this. And because it's that professional quality it's completely weather sealed you can drop it and you can be sure that it's not going to break. It's a professional build quality camera. The things it does lack is its autofocus capabilities and now especially for video it's not really keeping up with what I want it to do. So I am going to sell this camera, I'm going to get rid of this camera, but that means that so many of these cameras are going to come available on the second hand market and they are such great photography cameras. You've got all of those professional modes and you've got the professional quality lenses to go on this as well. But even this and this cheap lens, this 50mm f1.8 is a great starter kit to get you started taking some really creative photographs. This camera is not for me anymore because the way I take photos and the way I take videos has really changed. It only has nine focus points. So what you have to do is you have to focus on a point and you have to recompose if you don't want the point that's in focus to be in the very center of your frame. This has nine focus points and really only the center one is fast and accurate. So with a newer camera, you'll be able to use the thousands of focal points they have across the sensor to avoid having to do that. You can just compose the photo, tell it where to focus or let it decide and take the photo. And for me, taking photos of my daughter, and now she moves around a lot and very quickly, it's not really fast enough. But it's still great for still life, for portraits, for landscapes, for so many different uses. And with a camera like this, you can really learn the exposure triangle. That's ISO, shutter speed, and aperture. And you get different creative effects when you manipulate each of those. Well, right now, there are so many new cameras coming out that so many ex-professionals, ex-enthusiasts will be selling cameras like these. And so their price is gonna go way down. So for something like this, which is an ex-professional quality camera, you are gonna get that for the same price as a cheap consumer camera. This camera will definitely be great for those Instagram bangers. There's also so many different options of lenses that you can use on this interchangeable lens camera. And because so many people are going to be trading in this old system, this EF mirrored SLR system, you're going to be able to find so many old lenses and even vintage lenses which are going to adapt to this body and be able to spend not as much but still get some professional quality. You know, some photograph quality that was good enough five or ten years ago and you're going to be able to learn those skills. I think there's such an issue around photography that we all kind of lust after the really pro level gear, but don't let that stop you. So grab yourself an inexpensive camera and start learning about how ISO changes the noise in your images. Start learning about how the aperture affects the depth of field in your images. Start learning about shutter speed can give you frozen motion or motion blur. And start learning about composition too. So the reason this camera, I'm trading this up is because the way I take photos has changed. I used to set the focus with the autofocus points and then recompose and take the shot. But modern cameras will allow you to focus in one of any one of thousands of different focal points on the sensor. That point and recompose is not fast enough for capturing my daughter when she's now running around. But at the end of the day, it might just come down to glass for you. The fact that with a professional camera, with a full frame sensor, you can get so much glass and so much creative effects out of all that different second hand inexpensive glass that you can get. Even pro level glass will be coming down in price because there are so many new cameras and new camera systems coming on the market at the minute. So this is the 5D Mark II. Even if that's too expensive for you, if you look at that on eBay or wherever, then a 5D Mark I will still give you an incredible photography experience or maybe even look for the 6D Mark I. These are free full frame Canon cameras so you're gonna get all of those creative effects and you can really learn the skill of photography before you think about maybe buying something more expensive. 
and as it's a camera system, the lens and things can stay with you as you upgrade. I did promise you one bonus tip of how you can actually get started with photography for free. Well, there's two options. Firstly, you'll find a lot of DSLRs sitting around in lofts in your maybe relatives or your parents or your friends cupboards that they loved a little while ago but now they've moved on maybe they don't bring out the big heavy DSLR all the time and you'll go to find those things and maybe ask to borrow those and start shooting photography and video for free or of course we all carry around quite capable photography cameras in our pockets just remember that a phone camera does not do everything this does so a phone camera, in my opinion, is great for learning the skill of composition. It's great for looking at different camera angles and you should explore using your phone camera for photography. But it falls down whenever you want to do anything creative like a depth of field and especially if you want to do anything like high shutter speed, anything in lower light, then a phone camera, the sensor is just too small. As you go up through consumer, point of shoot cameras, all the way to this professional level, the main thing that's changing is actually the sensor size. And the sensor size gives you much more versatility. So if you're really interested in learning photography, I suggest you find yourself a pro level, second hand, full frame camera, and you really get to grips with what makes a great photograph. So that was fun. Let me know if you want some more photography videos on Gorilla Physics. What if you've got any questions about developing your own photography? Well, hit me up, because why not? or let me know if you just want me to get back to physics.